Hi, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. Just real quick today, I want to give you four reasons to stick with your King James Bible. You know, people, they always say about all these new Bible perversions that, uh, uh, oh, no doctrine is infected. Uh, no major doctrines are affected. All right, well, just let me give you four real quick. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for our salvation. And thank you for our precious Holy Bible. Help us in these next few moments just to uh, lift up you and your word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. No major doctrines were affected. That's what they say. All right. Well, let's 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 check that out. How about uh, go to uh, Acts chapter eight first. Acts chapter 8, all right? This is where Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch are having their interaction. Philip witnesses to the eunuch. They read Isaiah. And as they come along there, at verse 35, uh, when Philip opened his mouth, began to, at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And uh, as they went on their way they came unto a certain water and the eunuch said see here is water what doth hinder me to be baptized all right there's water uh can i get baptized what's the prerequisite to get water baptized what's the deal what i got to do huh philip said verse 37 if thou believest with all thine heart thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. My friend, that's only in your King James Bible. You won't find that in any of their modern Bible perversions. And that's why you got folks sprinkling little babies and thinking they're saved. That's where baptismal regeneration comes in. People thinking that the water saves them. Uh, no, no, this defines water baptism. If you believe with all your heart, you've already believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're already saved, then you can go get water baptized. See? No, that changed doctrine. That completely changed doctrine in a big way when they removed that verse. All right? I'll give you another one. We just did a video on this. 1 John 5, 7. First John 5, 7. The strongest verse in the Bible on the Trinity and deity of Christ. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Ooh, we. Ooh, we, ooh, we. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, these three are one. You've got the doctrine of the Trinity and the doctrine of the deity Christ locked in, solid, God's Word right there. You're only going to find that verse in your King James Bible. They, they've taken it out. <laughs> Say, it doesn't affect doctrine? <laughs> Huh? How about the doctrine of the Trinity? The doctrine of the deity of Christ. Amen? No, oh, that affects doctrine big time. All right. Let's go for another one. Let's go for 2 Corinthians 2.15. 2 Corinthians 2.15. 2 For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. In them that are saved. I'm saved. Are you saved? <laughs> Listen, if you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. huh? Saved is what? It's past tense. I'm not being saved. I am saved. All your other Bibles say, in them that are being saved. All your other Bibles in that verse have you working and earning 
and enduring unto the end, you're still being saved. Listen, I'm not being saved. It is finished. My salvation is complete. It's by grace, through faith, in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not being saved. I am saved. That changes doctrine big time, big time. One word, one word. And I don't know how much doctrine this is, but let me give you one more. Luke 23, 33. Luke 23 and 33, where Jesus is going to the cross. Amen. It says, and, and when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. The place that is called Calvary. Oh, the old hymn says, mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Hallelujah. To sing the praises of Calvary. Amen. I'm so glad I heard about Calvary. I'm so glad I know about Calvary. But guess what? You will not find the word Calvary in any of those modern Bible perversions. The only place that you will find Calvary is in your King James Bible. That ought to, you know what? That ought to make you, that ought to make you mad. That ought to make you spitting mad that those garbage Bibles would throw away our Calvary. Listen, I don't know about you. And I know they give you, they give you all a bunch of doctor bottle stopper, doctor smell fungus. Uh, what is that? The, a word salad. They're going to give you a big, long word salad about their justifications and reasons for taking those verses out of the Bible. Yeah, the devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. Let me just tell you that right now. Amen. I don't know about you. But I'm not willing to give up Calvary. I'm not willing to give up uh, my uh, salvation by grace through faith. I'm not willing to give up the doctrine of the Trinity and the deity of Christ. I'm not willing to give up the truth about water baptism. I'm not willing to give up any of those things. And so <laughs> I'm not willing to give up my King James Bible. I know, seek ye out the book of the Lord. I know where it is, amen. I have a 100% pure, perfect, preserved word of God. The only 100% pure and perfect thing on the face of planet earth I hold in my hand right here. All those others are Satan's attempt to confuse, water down, and lead you away from God's truth. Listen, there's nothing in any of those garbage Bibles that's not in your King James Bible. But there's a ton of stuff that is in your King James Bible that is not in those gar watered down garbage Bibles. So, hey, as for me and my house, <laughs> we sticking with the book and we hope you will too. God bless you and we'll see you in the next one.